We thank God for Jesus this morning. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. One songwriter said, I'm glad to be in his service one more time. And then he said again, he didn't have to let me live, but I'm here. And I thank God for that, for service that that is one more time. Oh, I'm so glad that God has blessed us and that he knows all of us. Second Timothy uh, 2 Timothy 2.19, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, that God knows everybody that belong to him. Let them the name, the name of the Lord depart that is from iniquity. It's just good to be able, not only to be in the house of the Lord and you having your own little space and all of that. It's just good to be alive and to be able to just thank him for everything that he has done. The least little thing you can do for somebody to open the door is say thank you. The least little thing you can do for somebody to let you in the traffic is to wave your hand. And we came to just to thank him this morning. Somebody ought to thank him. We're moving on into the new year. And you ought to be able to say thank you because if it had not been for his grace, we would be in trouble right now. It takes grace to get up in the morning. It takes grace to eat the right thing. Am I right? It takes some grace to deal with your mother-in-law and she don't like you. It takes grace. We need some grace. And I thank God for his grace. Amen. And his mercy. We're going to ask our sister Lord Turner to come to us at this time. Amen. And give us our praise and worship. Hallelujah.
And God has been so good to every last one of us. Now it's time for prayer. Amen. And there's not a day go by, not a minute, not a second. I don't believe there's a half a second that there isn't anything that is to pray about. When Moses sit, stood on the crabby summit of Mount Sinai, he prayed. You understand? When Jesus was uh, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, believe it or not. And prayer has its place, you understand. And I'm so glad that we can go to the throne of grace. Amen. God can enthrone us and he can bless us because the many things that we have that is hanging around us and hanging on us, we need to be loose from those spirits. So we're going to pray. We're going to ask God that he would come in and that he would visit every last person that's here and that he would visit this whole world. We thank you. Amen. We have another song by Sister Turner and then we're going to ask Brother Ted Henry to lead us to the throne of prayer. So you have a man that's equipped 
And we thank God for that. His queenly wife is with us today. We thank God for her. And not only that, but a couple of his seniors are with us today. And we thank God for them. Amen. Amen. We have a song. And after the, that song is, is over with, the next voice you would hear would be that of Pastor Raymond Davis. And he's from the St. Peter's Baptist Church. Amen. Right next door. You got a rock? I can throw the church and get it. Thank you. May God bless you.
back there, no running. Amen. 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 When he said come, that means you say how far I gotta go. Amen. So uh, nevertheless, um, I am here to preach. And uh, I want to thank God for my lovely wife and a few of my members that's here as well. And I want to thank y'all. Amen. I had to bring my amen section. And just in case uh, y'all was tired of saying amen. Amen. So uh, nevertheless, uh, it's good to see all of you uh, yet in the land of the living. Amen. And also on this side of 2020. Amen. It's a blessing to see you all. Um, but if, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to say a word of prayer. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we know that uh, we used to say that as a cliche uh, during the testimony service. But God, we thank you for life, health, and strength in this day and in this time where we could be dead, sleeping in our grave. God, you have allowed us to see another day, God, last night could have been our last night, but you allowed us to see another day, God, last night, the bed that we slept in could have been our cooling board, but God, you let us see another day, God, and we just say thank you for what you have done, God. We thank you for keeping our families on last night. We thank you, God, for what didn't happen, God. We thank you because the robbers didn't come in and break into our house, God. We thank you for what didn't happen, God. We didn't have uh, family members who died tragically because of a car accident, God. We thank you last night that nobody fell and ended up in a hospital, but God, we thank you right now for what you have done. God, we thank you for being the keeper. God, we thank you for being a provider. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for being not only uh, the God of our salvation, but God, we thank you for the for being the God who has kept us thus far. In your son Jesus' name, God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you allow the seeds of this sermon to fall on the soles of the heart of your people. God, and cause it to grow rapidly. And I say, amen. 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 If you don't mind, uh, those of you who have your Bible here, uh, I'm going to uh, try to get in and get you out. Amen. Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to hoop and holler. Amen. But I might just holler. Amen. Or just who I don't know. Amen. How the Lord do it? Amen. Philippians uh, 3, um, 13 and 14 is a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, it says that, brethren, I count not, I count not myself to have apprehend, uh, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God's word is already blessed. If you don't mind, I know if it's just a few of us here, but would you shout right where you are? Uh, I have to get past this. I need for you to look at one more neighbor. They didn't like you that much, but would you look at one more neighbor and tell that neighbor, I have to get past this. 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 Uh, my sisters and brothers, as I peruse the parameter of our pericope, I want to pause here parenthetically and just submit a brief uh, antidote, if I could, I can remember a few years back uh, while staying on Joseph Campo, I was banking with Chase Bank on Eight Mile in the Quinter, and uh, and I was there to transact some business, and uh, I walked into the door, only to find out that the door in front of me that I'm trying to open up would not open up. Uh, beloved, I couldn't go forward until the door that was behind me had closed completely. You're a little slow, but you're worth waiting on. I'm coming to get you. My sisters and my brothers, before we can move forward in life, it is important that we make sure that we have closed and padlocked the door to our past. 
I'm preaching better than you saying amen. So we can move forward in our future. Uh, if you don't mind, would you look at one more neighbor, tell that neighbor, neighbor, you have to close the door before you can move forward. Okay, y'all ain't feeling that, so maybe I'm not coming through. In this day and time, it's easy uh, to see people acting as if they do not have a past. Yes. I wish I had a church right there. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, but the truth is, even those who can preach, even those who can quote the entire Bible, I don't care how big your Bible is, how fancy your car is, how big your house is, uh, there is somebody here who has a past. Ah, uh, we got people who shout around the church, fall on the floor, their eyes uh, rolling in the back of their head, they spitting up at the mouth, doing spooky church. Uh, but at the end of the day, y'all say spooky church. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, they still have a past. The Bible says we all have sinned. From the pulpit to the pew, we all have sinned and still, watch this, falling short of God's glory. Every day, we don't get it right. Every day, we don't, okay, I wish I had a church right there. Uh, but don't, don't look around, don't look around, don't look around, look straight up here. Don't look around, don't look around. I need for y'all to look straight up here, don't look around. Because if you only knew how nasty your neighbor was. Ah, and who they was nasty with. Ah, before they got delivered. Where's, the, where's, the, where's your amens right there? Before they got delivered, uh, you might not consider them to be as holy as they look. Let me come clean. I don't know about y'all, but the truth of the matter is, I'm standing here today, but I have some stuff in my past that I am not pleased with. I have some stuff in my past that I'm not proud about. Uh, do I have a witness there that can be honest in here on today? Ah, uh, you have some stuff in your past uh, that you ain't pleased with. But I uh, beloved, I have to pause here for a praise break. I have to pause here for a praise break. I shout by myself. Uh, I don't need no music. I praise God by myself. Uh, but I brought. Uh, uh, a praise break because I have to praise God for not letting everything he delivered me from get out. Wow. I wish I had a church right there that would praise God. Ah, I'm so glad I got my own praise in here today. And I'm praising God because I'm glad that the nasty stuff that I did on last year or last month or last week didn't get out. I, I,
Christians. Our God shielded us. The Lord blocked us from what should have happened. And what should have happened is that our past should have been out in the forefront. Ah, because we really wasn't that good. But His grace. Oh, that's a good place to shout right there. That's a good place to shout right there. But His grace moved in and captured you. Ah, is there anybody here that has been captured by the grace of y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Is there anybody here that know you have been captured by the grace of God? And that it was His mercy that has kept you thus far. Uh, some people think that they are where they are, uh, beloved, because of their degree or their pedigree. Uh, some people that comes to church that might tune in uh, to this live feed because they think that they got where they are because of their sorority or their fraternity. Uh, but do I have a witness in here today that know that you made it out of 2020? Get past and get over is what people didn't find out. 
Uh, and as a consequence, you're scared not from somebody. You ain't scared of nobody because you big, bad, and you grown. Uh, but but because you have to, uh, you because you, you're scared because you have been beating yourself into a park for knowing the full truth. I had a church right there. Uh, and no matter how much you cover it up, and no matter how much you try to play it all off, uh, what didn't hit the fan, you can't get it out of your head. Uh, because it's stuck and it's inscribed in your mind. Honestly, sometimes it's hard to talk straight because pieces and fragments of your crooked past keep coming out of your mouth.
get past this. Uh, so in essence, uh, you missed your shout. I want to shout you just one more time. I told you I got to roll and bounce. Uh, here it is. Here's your shout. Your shout is whatever is over your head. He said, I'm getting ready to put it under your feet. Ah. I wish I had a church right there. Whatever has been over your head, God sent me on the divine assignment that whatever has been over your head, uh, he's getting ready now to give you strength to tread upon. Oh, God is giving you strength right now, even in this moment, to get past it. Whatever had you bound, you shall, it shall let you go. Whatever had you bound, uh, it shall let your courage go. Whatever had you bound, it shall let your faith go. Whatever had you bound, it shall let your faith go. Tell your neighbor, uh, whatever it is, you're going to get past this. I hear y'all thinking, I hear y'all thinking, you say, well, Pastor Ray, well, how do you know uh, that we're going to get past this? Uh, 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 how do you know that we're going to get past uh, what happened in my childhood? Uh, how do you know that I'm going to get past being touched by a grown, no good person? How do you know that I'm going to get past all the friends who turned on me and didn't give me a warning? How do you know I'm going to get past all the gossip and no good church folks? How do you know I'm going to get past? Because I know, because I ask. I ask Paul. How do I know? I ask Paul. Paul told me. He said, brother, I counted not. <laughs> I counted not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forget the things. That means you have. Got, oh, I wish I had a church right there. Uh, which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. If you don't mind, I would like to give you three things you should do when you're trying to get past it. Three things. I want to give you three things that the text suggests. Right? Here it is. You're going to get past this when you forget about it. I wish I had a church right there, man. I, I told you I brought my own amen section. Where y'all at? Amen. Uh, here it is. Uh, you're going to get past it when you forget about it. Uh, it ain't nothing worse than people who said I forgave you but then holding it over your head. I wish I had a church. If you're going to forgive me forward, then that means you ought not keep holding me to uh, something God has delivered me from. Uh, if you, I wish I had a church. Uh, you ought to say amen so the people in here won't know that it's you. Uh, you ought to say amen uh, because you did something wrong and you asked somebody to forgive you and they have forgiven you. But the, uh, the worst thing is the being forgiven and then having hell over your head. Uh, we often let those things which are behind us distract us. Y'all missed it. Whether they be good things or whether they be bad things. Looking at what is in the past often keep us from what God has in our future in store. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. But we're distracted because of what happened in our past. But look, you can obtain and get over the obstacles if you learn how to forget what is in your past and press toward your future. Ah, uh, uh, the first, the first reason, or uh, the first way I know that you're going to get past it is because you're going to have to forget about it. Uh, but secondly, my sisters and brothers, and I'll get you out of here. Here it is: you're going to get past this not only when you forget about it, but when you reach for it. Ah, uh, the text. Uh, I, I gave you the text two times already. You don't have to write it down and read it to 
yourself. Uh, when you get home, study to show thyself. Uh, Prove all right and, and make sure that I'm in the text. Here it is. Uh, you're going to get past this when you reach for it. Uh, uh, let your haters reach for your past. Come on, come on. I wish I had a church right there. Let your haters reach for your past. Why? Because that's all they got on you. That's all your haters got on you is your past, what you used to do, and how you used to act. They don't have your future, but they seen it. Right. And if they can distract you from getting to it, I wish I had a church. Uh, here it is. You have to reach for your present, your now, and your today. Hallelujah. It is a deception to live either in the past or even in the future. God wants us to press in the presence because the present is where eternity touches us now. That was smooth right there. You're going to have to rewind it back to get that again because I got to move forward. Uh, Paul knew that the race is won only in the present moment, not in the past or not even in the future. So not only do you have to forget about it, you have to press toward it. You have to press toward it. Beloved, if you're pressing to your prize, you are pressing towards the high call. It is a high calling because it comes from above. Oh, I wish I had a church right there. That was cool too. You missed it. You missed the shot. You're going to have to rewind it and play it again and be able to get it back because I got to move. Here it is. God sits high and he looks down low. I know you thought the prize was a million bucks in a big house and a mega millions. I know you thought the prize. Ah! I know you thought the prize was having that fancy car, uh, but the prize, the prize is after all the wrong that I've done, after all the mistakes I have made, I can still hear his voice. I wish I had a church. The prize is not the big house or the fancy hill. Said, I told you to say it. But would you tell another neighbor to 
going to get past this. Whatever your this is, your this might not be my this, but we all have a this. And the only way to get past it, you are going to have to press past it. You're going to have to reach forward. You're going to have to forget about it. Not that you know everything, but one thing you ought to know is you can get past this. God bless you all. Thank you, Just Campbell Church of God. My family, I love y'all. Amen. Pray my strength the Lord. Can't get past this. Whatever your this is, God is able to take you and carry you through. We thank uh, God for Brother Raymond sharing that word with us on today. A message that when we're going through, we can realize and know that we can get past this. Whatever your this is. Father, we thank you. We serve a great big God. A God is able to deliver us, to see us through, Lord. It says, be not this day with every time. God will take care of you. And we thank you that we have a God caring God that's going to take us through in the midst of our trials. God continue to bless us, Lord. Let us be encouraged because of the word we've heard on today. Not just today, but throughout this year, Lord, we can look back over and remember this word that we can get past this. Thank you. We praise you. All that you've done and all that you're going to do, Lord, we just magnify your name. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.